Welcome to Building Together. I'm Julia, here with Colin, and today we're talking Ninjago City Market. In 2017, LEGO blew my mind when they released Ninjago City, and on June 1st, 2023, we spent nearly $400 to add this one, the Ninjago City Markets, to our collection. Does it match up with its predecessors? What do I think is its most flawed characteristic? And would I buy this over the Ninjago City Gardens? Stick around to find out. This set is massive. You don't realize how big it is until you see it in person. At two base plates wide, it's the same size as two modular buildings. At the same time, it's even more than two modulars because it has over 6,100 pieces, which is about 200 more than the Boutique Hotel and Jazz Club combined. The prior Ninjago City sets have a number of common characteristics. First, they navigate from the old city of wood and plaster and stone to the brightly colored new city. This set follows that evolution. You have the bakery, the blacksmith, and a 24-7 convenience store, all with small upstairs apartments on the lower level. You have huge structural supports in place to hold up the new city, which features modern shops like a karaoke bar, cell phone store, rooftop diner, and the most modern Lego bathroom ever. A second common feature is the prevalence of artwork, advertisements, and huge brick-built animals. Like its predecessors, the market has a ton of stickers. These stickers are fantastic, combining humor with Easter eggs and information with playability. For instance, check out this poster showing the rare and coveted Lego goat that says, missing. Or this one with a shout out to the Gardens Museum. The giant squid-like creature at the top of the sushi bar is simpler than some of those found in earlier city sets, but it's effective nonetheless. There's also a lot of playability. The cable car runs from the old city up to the second level and is handicap accessible. The most modern bathroom in LEGO history contains a flushable toilet. It's pretty ingenious. Just press the handle and the waste flows down a gap in the karaoke bar wall, flows along an under-platform slope, down through the central support column and out into the water. There's also a platform lift in two spots, one on the front that is operated by a Technic mechanism and another in the back that allows you to access the cable car control room. The problem is that the play features are a bit clunky, other than the toilet. The cable car runs well along the simple yet effective brick-built line, but the turning gear is slightly awkward. The front rising platform is tough to work as well as the little Technic connector piece that you turn often breaks off. And the collective set of play features just doesn't quite match up to the original Ninjago City set with its crab grill, ATM machine, vending machine, and revolving sushi bar table set a high bar. A third commonality is the creative roof designs. The markets does not disappoint. You've got stable doors used effectively on the front by the cable car loading station, some of the new slopes that look great for the Asian style architecture, tooth pieces at the top of the karaoke bar, candle pieces for the roof and the convenience store, book pieces for the bakery roof, and double rounded slopes atop the bathroom. I can't say that any one particular style is as impressive as the treasure chest lids from the gardens or the crowbars from the original set, but collectively, these techniques are pretty quality. Speaking of quality, the building techniques are pretty impressive in all the Ninjago City sets, but the building techniques in this set are really impressive. Let's start with the bottom levels. The short steps leading up to the cable car loading zone represent the technicality of this build rather well. Using 1x2x2 slopes on their side is effective. They rest on jumper plates, which keeps them in place when pressed upon. Capping off those slopes with cheese slopes to fill the entire gap was pretty clever. And beneath those steps is the drainage pipe, which is another highly technical build. The ball joint piece rests on some tiles flipped on their side, which helps keep the pipe in place. But the pipe itself is connected to the rest of the build with candles, which also allow you to place a water piece to represent the water coming out of the pipe. Absolutely mind 
flowing. Right, even the support columns are insane. In the central column, you have a lot of vines and greenery, which add complexity to the build and weren't necessary, but add exquisite detail. The front support column uses flat roller coaster pieces in reddish brown for the first time. The pool table in the karaoke bar is about as complex of a mini build as you can get, even though the grill in the sushi bar gives it a run for its money. The sign for Sushimi's restaurant is cleverly built, as are the interiors of pretty much every building. And let's not forget one of my favorite building techniques in the set, using picket fences as windows, particularly the snot techniques used on the apartment above the bakery. In fact, the whole bottom left side of the build was fascinating and honestly made me feel like an inferior Lego builder. It's as if the set designers decided that they would build parts of this set in the most unique, challenging way possible, even when a simpler alternative existed. The end result was a highly engaging build that grew my understanding of how Lego pieces can be used. I also like how this set has so many new pieces and old pieces in new colors. That's right, there are a ton of great pieces in this set. You've got a new snot brick that's two plates high and rounded in the back that promises to be useful and is already available in a handful of 2023 sets. Those stable doors for the roof are in black for the first time. The short tufted hairpiece comes in both black and turquoise with the latter being new this year. You get six of the new 3x3 corner plates in black, which otherwise only appear in a Star Wars set. And there's 1x3 and 1x4 Technic plates available for the first time. There's also a hair piece with buns and bangs and coral for the first time. Another layered hair piece for the first time in dark purple. Bright pink flowers with three petals that are new. The round window corner in dark blue for the first time the dark turquoise door frame, which is also in a June Disney release, the arch jumper piece in green, fleshy colored headlight bricks, lime green frogs, and roller coaster track, pearl gold 1x2x2 window frames, sand green brackets, and even the standard chair piece in dark red for the first time ever. And these don't include the vast array of useful bricks, plates, and tiles that populate this set. I truly mean it when I say that the piece selection and utilization in this set is top notch. We've been gushing about this set for a few minutes. Yeah. So are there any disappointments with it? There are some disappointments. We noted the clunkiness of some of the play features earlier. Another disappointing aspect is the stickers. Look. All of the Ninjago City sets come with stickers, and this one has a whopping 70 plus stickers in it, but there are a couple of times you have to place stickers on curved or circular elements, which is a huge pain. Because of their prominence in this set, if you misalign a sticker, it can be pretty noticeable. Those seem like somewhat minor reasons to be disappointed. Is there anything else? Well, one of the biggest criticisms I have of the set is that parts of it feel incomplete. A small example of this is the sign for the upcoming Rebuild movie that hangs off of the bathroom wall. The sign is nicely capped with lime green plates and the 1x3 inverted arches in red, but the bottom is only partially bordered in lime green. It, it just looks awkward. And that's also small, but the biggest issue is the back of the blacksmith shop. It's completely open. No other building in Ninjago City has an open back. To be fair, there are no doors in the shop giving it an open vibe, but it's pretty well enclosed on three sides and just wide open in the back. The same side of the convenience store, on the other side of the set, has a removable wall that consists of about 40 pieces and is reasonably intricately built. I think 60 more, maybe 70 more pieces to close off the blacksmith shop would suffice. Let's address the value question and hand out some ratings. Remember how I mentioned at the beginning that it was equivalent to two modular buildings? This set comes in at $370 and the last two modulars combined at $460. So for $90 less, you get over 200 pieces more and six more minifigs. 
And the build is incredible. There's never a dull moment. And when you're done with it, you get this massive, really nice display piece that also is pretty playable. So I think if you have the money, it's a good value. I know that not everyone can afford to drop $370 on a Lego set, but I think it's really worth that price. So how would you rate this set? I'm gonna rate this set a 10. Oh! How about you? Uh, I am going with a 9. I, I do think that it's worthy of its predecessors, great details, but if you're torn between the Ninjago City Gardens and this set, I would get the Gardens for two reasons. One, I think it's a better set. And two, that's one that's going to be in the stores for less time than this one. This one was just released and will probably be around for two to three years, similar to the other ones. The Gardens only out has already been out for two years now, so that could be retiring in the next year or so. So if you're saving up your money and you are torn between the two, I recommend going with the Gardens. So there you have it, a review of Ninjago City Markets. Hey, before you go, check out this review of the equally massive Rivendell. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and always remember to keep, keep building, building together. together.